Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everybody. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and to another layout design video. This layout design is a lot smaller than most of those that I am retained for. The customer initially gave me a space of only 10 feet by 6, and he is working in O scale. Yes, that's right, 60 square feet for O scale. And I'm not talking 3 rail either. Actually, the client's main love is for ON30, which basically is O scale narrow gauge running on HO track, representing a 30 inch gauge. Although he did want a cosmetic standard gauge interchange as well. Now, initially, we talked about designing a U shaped layout with one side being a staging yard and the other side being the narrow gauge terminal with standard gauge interchange. But after further discussion, this quickly evolved into a donut, a continuous run around the walls with some kind of movable section to get inside. The client is in the process of moving house, so we don't actually have a specific site set out for it yet. The expectation being that it will use part of a spare bedroom. And we're thinking that many spare rooms are somewhere in the region of 10 feet by 12. So this would fit either across the back of the room or in a corner, allowing walkways around two sides. And in most configurations, that is going to allow access from the room door to the closet and window as well. Which is why you see I've sketched out a benchwork plan with three hard corners and one curved corner. The client wants to make sure that it can be built in small sections that can be easily assembled by one person. So what I've drawn here is a basic benchwork plan made up of six small sections and a bridge section. Although we quickly moved on from this and ended up with a corner lift section following the arrangement on the client's previous railroad. In the early stages of the design, we threw many rough sketches back and forth between us. Although the first one that was actually drawn out to scale is this one. I say the first one, but this one actually appeared after several iterations trying to get it to fit. The client initially anticipated 18 inch radius curves and number four turnouts. I was able to use number five turnouts almost entirely. The only two exceptions being these two at the start of the main yard. Now this portion of the railroad I just referred to it as the main yard, but the intention is to use it as visible staging. Once the standard gauge interchange appeared, it became impractical to fit everything else that he wanted, as well as a hidden staging yard. So this yard area here will have to do double duty. Anyway, I said earlier that we threw around a lot of rough sketches, none of which were promising. As soon as I drew this one out and sent it off to the client, he basically fell in love with it because it included everything that he wanted, including a lot of things that he did not expect to be able to get in the very restricted footprint that we had available. There were a few things that he thought could be improved, as there always is. Among other things, he asked about the possibility of, of switching the engine house and the sawmill. Now, I didn't think it was gonna work because it really makes no sense for there to be an engine house in this location. Although I did draw it out, the drawing that had the engine house in this location did not get saved. Here is a version with the sawmill moved to the other side of the railroad. And also in this plan, we're experimenting with a couple of minor land grabs. This is the actual footprint of a sawmill structure that he already has constructed. And it's a little tight in this location. So that's why I suggested maybe grabbing an extra two inches just in front of it. The aisle is plenty big enough for operation by only one person. And if he ever does have visitors, the second person will just remain outside the railroad and operate from this side. The other colored lines show two possible shapes for the front of the railroad, getting rid of the straight line. The main reason we needed it is that the client wanted this additional space in this area between the narrow and standard gauge lines for a fairly large station structure that he was in the process of building. I think he said the requirement was for a minimum 10 and a half inches from center line to center line, or something of that order anyway. 
So in order to get that, we needed to put the standard gauge main line on a slight angle, hence the need to widen the bench work in this one area. But we've still kept to the six foot maximum width at each end. That way, even with a slightly smaller than normal spare bedroom, whichever corner the door is in, it will still open. Here is the next one I drew. For the most part, the track remains as it was, but I have filled in different structures. The sawmill spur has been moved to the front of the layout with the structure behind it, per the customer's request. I've drawn in the footprint of the dual gauge station. This is the actual size of the engine house that he has currently in his possession. It's a very nice structure. I think he built it from a craftsman kit. And here I've shown how the corner lift section works. There being a three inch wide section rigidly attached to the wall with the hinges on the top disguised by the scenery or probably just painted the same color as the ground cover to make them less obvious with this curved portion of the main line folding up against the wall when the client wants to get inside. So it looks like this is going to be a very short layout design video, which is not surprising really considering the simplicity of the railroad. As I said before, most of my layout designs are a lot more complex than this. Anyway, this turned out to be almost the final version. Here it is with the landscaping drawn in. The client did make one change request at this point. He wanted to get rid of the second stream, just keep the one on the lift section, but do away with the one by the sawmill. It turns out that the prototype sawmill that he's basing it off was not on a stream. There was an isolated man-made log pond, but it was not on any kind of natural waterway. So as I say, he asked to remove the stream and replace it with some high scenery because he was hoping to build more of a visual view block between the two towns. And here it is with the stream removed. I just drew more trees in the area as there isn't really a lot I can do to show high ground on a two-dimensional plan. So I guess this is the end of this design. The customer is very happy with it, but it is not the end of this project because at the time of recording this, I've already received a down payment from the client for me to build this railroad for him. That will be a project for some time in the future because I have a major HL scale project in the pipeline, which I have to build first. The client is aware of that, and we have an anticipated start date of sometime in 2025. So with that announcement, I'm just going to sign off here. Hope you enjoyed this presentation, abbreviated though it was, and I hope to see you back next time. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and bye for now.